it's Lisa with a bunch of 4x6 photos that I want to put on a two page spread and I'm going to do something that I never ever do which is cut a photo right down the middle and split it across a page. Um, I very rarely cut a photo at all but if I do it's usually just a little bit of it that might split across a page but you'll see from my very symmetrical design that that's going to be what works to make this number of photos fit. When I pulled out the photos that I wanted to use I happened to have three portraits and five uh, or six um, landscape four by six photos and I just started arranging them and that's what looked good with them so I'm going to have one photo split in the middle so I've got to find one here that will work if it's split across the center of the page. Now uh, of course an alternate to that uh, would be to use maybe two larger photos here in place of this or to um, you know put some pattern paper or embellishment or something there uh, in the center. There's going to be also some stenciling here. I've pulled out a couple of possible stencils and I, I think I'm going to do a large one over the middle in just to, in the areas where it's going to show. What I'm wanting to emphasize is this is an exhibit of, forgive me if I mispronounce it, Chaluli. Uh, glass work and this was at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens earlier this year we saw this I think the exhibit is ongoing uh, this year and it was just beautiful to see these glass pieces mixed in with all of their gorgeous uh, floral displays so what I want to do is create something that sort of looks a little bit like glass and I thought about trying to jelly print on transparencies I've never tried that before to see how that would look and I started I got some paints out and then I thought you know what I really need to do is to use gel medium and my perfect pearls because that makes a really beautiful look that almost looks like um, glass um, so we're gonna do some with that and I'll get that medium out here in just a moment let's get the photos or this middle photo kind of in order and then I'm going to set all of this aside and we'll uh, get our stenciling going. This is the photo that I kind of want to put in the center but it's truly going to get split right down the middle of this large glass piece and I don't think that would be the best look so I think I'm going to switch them and put this one in the center because this one since it's pretty much the same stuff on either side I think it can be split without being um, as noticeable and then there's you know down here at the bottom these four by sixes end up um, two on each page so they come out fine now I also am going to need to pick a background for this there's not going to be a ton of background showing when what there is we'll have some stenciling on it and then a little bit of journaling a couple of embellishments and then you know we got a ton of photos uh, here to display and these are the kind of photos that I don't really want to put anything on top of I want to you know I could maybe tuck a little journaling here in this blank space but for the most part I, I want to really see my photos so I don't want to cover them up but I'm not going to have a lot of background showing uh, but I do need to get the right color and I've debated I thought about first black uh, to give some drama to this uh, but I'm afraid you know this would show up in color on the black but you would miss I think the transparent look of it uh, then I thought about white of course and I've also thought about doing green as another neutral so what I thought I'd do is I'd take my perfect pearls and mix them with the um, gel medium and get some colors and then try out some different colors stock samples and see just quickly what looks good and then whichever one looks good we'll get started doing the stenciling and I think the page will come together really quickly after that. So I'm starting here with some Liquitex heavy gel medium and three of my perfect pearl colors these are from Ranger and I'm just using an empty um, adhesive container the bubble thing that goes over the adhesive to do some samples here. There won't be enough of any of these to actually do the project but I need to test the colors because what happens with the gel medium is it starts out white and it's going to disappear. It's going to turn into a clear. So whatever you color you put in it looks very light right now. It looks like a very soft peach but that's going to become a lot darker once the white dries. So I've got several colors there to test and I'm testing them on white paper, black cardstock and a green color that I thought also might make a good background for these pages. 
I also have some ink refills. These are Stamping Up ink refills. There's a pigment one that was their old craft ink, as well as a couple of their regular classic ink refills or dye inks. It doesn't matter what kind of ink refills you have. It can be archival ink, whatever you've got, uh, you can mix with your gel medium. And it will water it down, though. So you can't use a lot of ink, but you don't typically need a whole lot, because remember, the white is going to disappear. So that rust color I have there is going to get quite a bit darker. As you'll see there on the black, it just practically disappears. And I need to decide which of these um, is going to look good, as I've got them dried now. And I didn't care for the white paper that much, but I did like either the black or the green. I was kind of surprised at how well the green came out. Even the green uh, sample showed up good on it. I just really need three colors. But I've decided to go with the black and use mostly the Ranger um, um, Perfect Pearls. What I'm doing right now is marking my black cardstock with where I'm going to need to put my stenciling, because I don't want to cover the whole thing with stenciling, because a lot of it's going to get covered up with photos. Now to make all of this easier to manage, I'm going to tape my cardstock on the back side with some washi tape and that way it'll stay together in the center and everything will stay nice and lined up and then I can just pull that off at the end. And I'll use some more washi tape to hold these stencils down. I should have picked a different washi though. This turns out to be a really sticky washi tape. It kind of tears my paper in a couple of places but we can live with that. If you have stencils and would like to use them more in your scrapbooking, check out my Scrapbooking with Stencils class. There's a link in the description for this video. So I just need to mix up some larger quantities of three of the colors. And I first thought I would use this orange as the center, and then I remembered that my um, letters, chipboard, or stickers that I'm going to use for the title are orange, so I don't end up using that in the center. Now in addition to the Ranger color, to make it show up a little bit more on the black, I added some um, ink, or I, excuse me, instead of just the ink, I added some of the Perfect Pearls, and it comes out really pretty. I'm spreading this real thin. and my mark there in the center and all kind of guides me so I know how much to cover because I don't really have to make the full circle. And then we have a green, also done with the Perfect Pearls. And this particular stencil is one I cut on the Cricut. When I still had a Cricut, I used one of the cartridges, I don't remember which one, uh, to cut that design out of stencil material that I buy at Hobby Lobby back in the area where they keep the home stencils. They just sell some blank stencil material, and that's where that stencil came from. Now the blue, I'm probably, I may have to mix up some more blue because I have or either spread it really thin here because I need to just do this little strip down through the middle and then I'm going to need to do a little bit at the very top and there is the blue and it's all dried now and it's really it's very pretty colors looks kind of funny but when I get the photos on there it'll look like you know the whole thing was covered with the different stencils and I'll just have to split that one in the middle and I'm trying to decide what I want to put for embellishments in those centers. I have these chipboard pieces out, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Now that one photo in the middle, I just split that on the paper trimmer in half and then put it on each side of the paper. You can just glue it down and then trim the whole thing on the paper trimmer in the middle when you get done if you want to. Now Cholule is not an even number of letters, so I put more letters on the left side of the page and fewer on the right. You could put the whole title on one side if you didn't want to split that across the photo, across the center. Now I was looking for brads where I had coupled the same, 
and I didn't really find any brads that I was real crazy about, but I did find these old basic gray rhinestone designs, and they were flowers. And I tried doing the whole flower, and it looked kind of funny. What I really want is just the top of the flower um, as a design there, so it looks sort of like a glass piece. And then I'll need to put my journaling on each side of the uh, title. You probably realized the mistake I made before I did. This element cannot go right here. Sometimes when you tape your pages together, you have get this false sense of security that you can just put anything spread across your pages, but you have to remember, of course, since you're going to take this apart, and this just could not be split. So it really couldn't work up there. So since the title had to be slightly off-center, I just went ahead and put it down there, and so we still get sort of a triangle kind of grouping here. I've added my journaling on a blue background. It's kind of the darkest color that I thought would work on here um, for uh, printing black text on a uh, a darker background. I didn't want to do a white background like I normally do. So you get to see all of the stenciling that we did and just a few simple embellishments and we let these great photos uh, speak for themselves. So I followed this pretty closely. I just added one more uh, bit of embellishment there. So thanks so much for joining me, and I can, at this point, take this apart. If you do two-page layouts, oh, and this is that tape that really sticks, isn't it? If you do two-page layouts, be sure and check out my two-page terrific class. It's been a really popular class. And we do all kinds of tricks for working across the two pages and I most of the time I do not split elements across the page. This one is kind of an exception. And something's oh my actual um, stenciling here might need just a little bit of help coming apart. There we go. Alright, so now we have two separate pages to put in our page protector. Thank you so much for joining me today.